Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Test Automation Engineer Certification. We are in Chapter 7 talking about verifying the test automation solutions. And as a part of today's tutorial, we are continuing with our next segment that is 7.1.2. Explain the correct behavior for a given automated test script and test suite. And as a part of this, we'll be further deep diving into the discussions of how exactly to assure the test steps and test scripts or test suites are up to the mark. In our previous tutorial, we tried understanding that every single component of the task is an examinable component with respect to testing them and verifying that they are functioning appropriately before it is handed over to the business or to the particular project because it is business to us. So uh, similarly, we are now deep diving to the concrete components and trying to understand how exactly this test script or test suite, which is collection of test script, is going to be verified. So let's quickly check what we have got from here to discuss. The very first thing, of course, an introduction. The automated test suites need to be tested for completeness, consistency, and correct behavior. Different kinds of verification checks can be applied to make sure that the automated test suite is available at any given time or to determine that it is fit for the use. Because most of the time when we say we are testing the test script, it certainly creates a very confusing statement that by running it to check the outputs, no, not on the SUT. We are trying to make sure that it is complete, correct and responding or corresponding to that of the functions which you want to test. And it is up to date because most probably what happens when you started the solutions being created, it might be that you have started with some of the drafts, but later the objects got identified and the scripts might have become outdated and may need a round of maintenance. And that is where by verifying them, we are making sure they are up to date and correct, complete in all manners to help the executions go smoother. Now further to add here, of course, steps can be taken to verify the automated suits include the following. That is check the composition of the test suite, verify new tests that focus on new features of the TAF, consider the repeatability of the tests, consider the intrusiveness of the automated test tools. In fact, we'll be discussing on these four pointers in more detail. So let's get into each one of them one by one to understand what are we referring when we say them. Let's move on to that. The next thing we are talking about is deep diving into it. So very first component we said is check the composition of the test suite, which talks about check for completeness. It includes test cases, whether they have expected results and the test data is present to supply them. And for the correct version, of the TAF and the SUT. The relevancy of data to the script and to the SUT is very important. I may have amazing set of test data, but mapping them to the respective functionality plays a crucial role. And if in case your mapping goes wrong, then you might be supplying wrong data for wrong a particular functionality. And that is where it is important for us to quickly perform a check that whether the data is aligned to that of the respective scripts, which will be performed on the SUT. So just collecting data is not enough. Aligning them with the right execution and scripts are equally important. The second element we covered here was verifying new tests that focus on new features of the TAF. The first time a new feature of the TAF is used in the test cases, it should be verified and monitored closely to ensure the feature is working correctly. This is pretty much self-explanatory and understands that every new test being added should be checked for its consistency, completeness, and making sure that they are going to work appropriately. The third element here we covered is consider the repeatability of the test. It says when repeating the test, the test results should always be the same. Having these cases in the test suite which do not give us reliable test result uh, should be moved from the active automated test suite and analyze separately to find out the root cause. Otherwise, time will be spent repeatedly on these test runs to analyze the failure. It's a very easy practice to do that because in, as in when a particular test fails, we try to separate this out to analyze so that the continuation of execution can happen. And at the same time, parallelly, the team is working on finding out what is the reason for this test as a failure. So this is where the approach will allow you to be more efficient and effective uh, at the same time consistently available for the SUT to perform the required execution. The final pointer here to discuss is the fourth one. And the fourth one says, consider the intrusiveness of the automated test tools. 
Intrusiveness simply refers to the level we can interfere with the system. The TAS will often be tightly coupled with the SUT. This is by design so that there is better compatibility as it pertains to, be, uh, to the level of interactions. However, this close integration can also lead to adverse outcomes. For instance, when the TAS is located within the SUT environment, the SUT's functionality may differ from when tests are conducted manually, potentially impacting performance as well. A high level of intrusion can show failures during testing that are not evident in the production. Uh, this can be easily related to our discussion from the previous tutorial when we were talking about the TAF components to be hosted on different environments and being tested. We were talking about exactly the same point, the intrusiveness. That if we try to host the TAS on the same environment where SUT is hosted, to just have a tightly coupled environment so that it works with minimum interfaces as possible. Because from a different source or from a different uh, inter uh, environment, it might have to pass through multiple interfaces like firewall, web services, etc. to reach out to the system. Hosting them on the same environment reduces these interactions and gives better intrusion on the SUT. But at the same time, the possible risk which we discussed about was the performance degradation of the SUT. Being hosted on the same, the TAS may utilize more resources than that of the SUT. And this could result into unforeseen situations of performing the required execution. Further to add here, of course, if this cause failures with the automated test, the confidence in the task can drop dramatically. Developers may require that failures identified by the test automation be reproduced manually, if possible, to assist with the analysis. Indeed, if this risk is ignored and not mitigated, that means we don't find a better way to manage the connectivity and interfaces between the SUT and TAS, people will have more and more failures. And these failures would certainly result into the loss of trust on our solution which we have provided. So indeed, it is a good practice to find out the better way first than that of failure and then resulting into unreliable product being supplied to them. So this is how we can look forward to discuss and understand about the same and how exactly the intrusiveness can be measured. So these are all the factors what we were supposed to worry about when we look forward to uh, verify or test the test scripts and the test suites. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning. Thank you.